Hello everybody, it's Captain Hooch here and welcome back to Elite Previews. Today we are looking at the Federal Corvette by Core Dynamics. The ship's exterior is a bland, heavily armored form of function design with front end stylings borrowed from the Farragut Battlecruiser and a rear that reminds me a bit of the Vulture. This choice of style may leave many pilots arguing as to whether or not this ship is beautiful or ugly. The inside of the cockpit speaks another story with hard corners and overly gray minimalist styling and silvery accents, which makes me feel like I'm just looking at a junkyard trailer's kitchen counter more than the dash of a spaceship. But we don't buy Core Dynamics for a luxurious cockpit, we buy them for performance. So let's take her out around the station and see if she has it where it counts. Flight assist off. Flight assist on. Immediately, you can feel the weight once you start flying it, and yet, the ship wants to act like a small, agile fighter trapped in a large ship's body. Flying this ship for the first time feels like a sumo wrestler trying to do parkour. For now, though, let's just shut up and listen to our engines as we continue our jaunt around the station. Federal Corvette is Core Dynamics' answer to the Guatemala Imperial Cutter, a ship that has to be flown with kid gloves because if you utilize its speed, you'll wind up wrapping it around the nearest station or asteroid. The Corvette, however, flies like a dream by comparison. While it may be slower, you still actually have to handle the stick aggressively and be prepared to throw the Corvette's weight around to take full advantage of its capabilities. This ship, however, is a battleship, and what kind of test would this be if we didn't take her into combat? Right away, you can tell she's agile enough to make fixed weapons viable, although in retrospect, I think I should have equipped a mix of fixed and gimbals to get the most bang for my buck. Versus smaller ships, the Corvette holds its own quite nicely, and although its twin C4 hardpoints behind the bridge hold it back, not for being bad, but for lack of options currently on the marketplace to mount on them. It's not all bad, as the ship's agility and weapon convergence make hitting with plasma accelerators a lot easier than it is on other ships that have their C4s mounted on the bottom. Despite this flaw, it is a fault of the weapons market more than the ship. The Corvette has no arguments about dealing death to her enemies. Moving away from battle, we head down to a planet to see if the ship's impressive thrusters can counteract its weight when having to deal with gravity. Once out of orbital cruise, you can absolutely feel how heavy this ship is, but the Corvette does its best to not let you know that, even when you go into a straight dive and the engines do everything in their power to stop you from crashing. Landing is also a breeze as she touches down gently and handles smoothly just over the surface where we can deploy our SRV and get a good look at her from the outside. Federal Corvette is a fantastic ship that's only real drawback is its lack of C4 hardpoint options, and that's not even its fault. 
If you got what it takes to push the ship to its limits, you'll find it writes a sweet apology letter for the previous federal military vessels. And I have to say, apology accepted. <laughs>